my overhead and calculating the ending balances in work in process and finished goods. For this company, we are going to calculate the information for three different jobs, job 106, 107, and 108. 106 and 107 show a beginning balance as of July 1st, meaning that these jobs were started in the previous period and will be worked on continuously through this period and further if necessary. They then tell us that overhead is applied to jobs at a rate of $16 per machine hour. Therefore, they've already calculated your predetermined overhead rate for you. They tell us that by the end of July, jobs 106 and jobs 108 were completed, job 102 and 106 were sold, and job 107 was the only job that was remaining in process at the end of July. They also tell us on July 1st that the balance in finished goods inventory was $49,000, and that was comprised of two jobs, job 102 for $25,600 and job 104 for $23,400. The company prices its jobs at a cost plus an additional 30% because they'd like to make a profit. They tell us that during July, they had variable marketing expenses that were 5% of their total sales, and fixed marketing expenses were $2,000. Administrative expenses were $4,800, and they tell us to round all the amounts to our nearest double dollar. In part one, they want us to prepare a job order cost sheet for all the jobs in process during July, showing all costs through July 31st. A job order, order cost sheet simply tracks the three components of product costs, which are direct materials, direct labor, and applied overhead for each individual job. Again, jobs 106 and 107 had a beginning balance in July because they had been in process from the prior month. Textbook gives you the information for the additional direct materials and direct labor that were added to each one of these jobs through the period. They also tell us that our predetermined overhead rate was based on direct labor. They said it was $16 per direct labor hour. They told us how many direct labor hours each job consumed. So to calculate our applied overhead, we simply multiply how many hours each job used of direct labor multiplied by that $16 predetermined overhead rate. Please note that in our job order cost sheet, we do not have a line for direct labor hours. Our job order cost sheet is tracking exactly that, only cost. We add up our components of product cost to determine how much each job has cost us so far. In part two, they want us to calculate the balance in work in process as of July 31st. Again, go back and read the information given in the problem very carefully. They tell us that only one job was still in process at the end of the month and that was job 107. Therefore, the only amount that would be in work in process at the end of July is the total amount for job 107, which is $35,550. In part three, they want us to calculate the balance in finished goods inventory as of July 31st. Again, always go back to the information provided to you in the book. They tell us that we had a beginning balance in finished goods inventory consisting of two projects that we had completed prior. The beginning balance was $49,000. We were told that job 108 was finished but not sold. And out of the beginning balance, Job 102 was in fact sold, so we need to subtract away the cost for Job 102 
of 25,600. Therefore, our ending balance on July 31st in finished goods is 79,550. Again, the reason why job 108 is being added in finished goods is it was completed during the period, but not sold. We're subtracting job 102 because it was part of our beginning balance of finished goods, but sold during the month. So we're subtracting that away. In part four, we need to calculate the cost of our goods sold in July. Again, refer back to the information given to you in the problem. It told us that job 102 was sold as well as job 106. We're looking for the cost of goods sold, meaning how much did it cost us to complete jobs 102 and 106. It was given to us that job 102 had cost $25,600, and we calculated back in part one through our job order cost sheet that job 106 cost us $55,760. Therefore, our cost of goods sold for the period is $81,360. The final piece asks us to calculate our operating income for our company for the month of July. When we're doing this, the first thing we need to calculate is how much, in fact, we sold our jobs for to our customers. We go back to the information provided, and it tells us that we are selling our jobs at cost plus 30%. Meaning, not only do we want to recover all of the cost that we spent to complete the job, but we want to make a 30% profit. So, we simply take our total cost of $81,360, and we add on an additional 30%. Our total revenue, therefore, is $105,768. We subtract away our cost of goods sold, which we just calculated in part four, to get to our gross margin. We have a gross margin in this case of $24,408. We also now need to subtract away any selling and administrative expenses. They told us in the problem that we had a variable marketing expense of 5% of our total sales dollars. So we take our total sales revenue and multiply it by 5%, and they gave us our fixed marketing and our fixed administrative expenses. So in total, we have $12,088 in period costs. We subtract those period costs from our gross margin to arrive at our operating income of $12,320. Remember, when you're doing a traditional income statement, we segregate our costs by product or period. Our cost of goods sold represents our product cost, what it cost us to create our jobs or our product, and our period costs, all other costs associated with running and operating our business. That includes selling and administrative expenses.